I want to now introduce somebody very, very special on the broadcast, Dr. G. Madhvi Lata. She has literally engineered history. She was awarded uh, the NDTV Science Icon of the Year Award at the NDTV uh, Indian of the Year Awards. And her role, in fact, in building the world's highest railway bridge over Chidab is absolutely phenomenal. A geotechnical genius who helped turn an impossible vision into reality. I spoke to her. Take a look. A feat which has been achieved in very extreme conditions. Uh, you know, the geographical conditions, temperature, everything has been of the very extreme nature. 17 year long project. And for you to lead that in a way, in a male dominated uh, industry, I must say, what were the challenges, obstacles, uh, you know, for you? Thank you. Thanks for these questions. First of all, I want to correct you both. I was a part of this uh, big, iconic national project, but I wouldn't call myself as the foundation or instrumental for this bridge because this is the vision of Indian Railways. And I was one of the technical contributors to the bridge. I'm very proud of my uh, contributions to the bridge. At the same time, I don't want to carry the guilt of carrying someone's fame with me uh, because I am one of the many. and. Uh, Whatever I did, I did with conviction, I did with commitment, and that is the reason I am in the news. But this glory belongs to Indian Railways and the construction companies and every engineer who worked. I worked with great minds of our country, so I don't want to steal their glory. This is for everyone, all of us. This is a moment of celebration for India, and we were a part of this big national project. What a humble person you are. How difficult was it to make the tallest railway bridge of the arch kind, higher than the Eiffel Tower, in such fragile Himalayas? Extremely difficult, because I was there from the beginning till end. I have seen how this bridge is unfolding on those very complex geological conditions, extreme climatic conditions, and more than that, we are also expecting the high seismicity in that region. And we are talking about a height of 359 meters, where wind is at a very speed, and when it is blowing at 220 kilometers per hour. So these are big, big challenges. And more challenges when we started the project is when we went forward, we, we found a lot of surprises. To our surprise, the geological conditions were continuously evolving. What we found on the surface is totally different from what we found when we went deeper after the excavation. So this is where the Indian Railways has the vision of design as you go approach because we cannot follow a probabilistic method which can be one of the solutions. Some of the countries follow that. But our codes are not well developed to adopt probabilistic size uh, analysis yet. So we had only this option that we we go with what we have in our hand and as we go inside we evolve when we follow the geological conditions and redesign everything in real time mm. now, as, yeah see we face earthquakes in himalayas it's sitting on the main thrust fault earthquakes of eight magnitude are expected can you place your hand on your heart and tell us that the Chenab Bridge will survive an 8 magnitude earthquake and that area has not broken an earthquake in the last 500 years. That's a very difficult question because every civil engineering structure is subjected to natural calamities and hazards. And if we follow the design exactly and if the construction quality is up to what we design on the paper, 100% the bridge should withstand an earthquake magnitude of 8. But the Wonderful. construction and the safety is the responsibility of Indian Railways. Can, can, I, can I just ask one, uh, because you, these are very extreme you know, conditions that we are talking about uh, as uh, you know, Pallav and you both in fact uh, uh, just explained to our viewers. Were there, it's, it's a very long project, 17 years. Were there ever moments of doubts? Were there, was there uh, you know, any moment when you thought maybe it's an endeavor that uh, is not possible, a feat which may not be achieved. And if there were, how did you overcome those doubts? Yes. So there were moments where there were doubts not in the technical people, but in the government itself, because there were some objections raised by some people uh, in the country that this is a very difficult terrain and we, are not, we will not be able to build a bridge here. So the project was stopped for some time. 
and those were the moments where all of us felt that we started something and if we stop now what message we are giving to our country and what will our uh, kids in undergraduate kids know about this bridge and think that they started and india couldn't do this so all technical people and the railways were very strongly supporting the construction and uh, continuing with the construction of the bridge but there were some problems due to which the bridge was stopped the construction was stopped but later there were again changes in the political scenarios and the government wanted the bridge to continue and here we are and we are seeing the vande bharat train running on the bridge uh, uh, professor madhvi you are at indian institute of science center for sustainability civil engineering department one of the finest institutions of the country but as a child you faced some very extreme poverty uh, how difficult was it to keep your focus to become an engineer join the indian institute of science tell me a little bit about that very yes. difficult days of your life you are right uh, i came from a very humble background from a very uh, small village and uh, things were not easy for me when i was growing up things were very difficult and i was not even sure that i will study beyond 10th class because my grandmother was ready with a groom and then uh, she said uh, this is it you have to get married but i was so passionate about studying further that when i begged she said you uh, if you come first in the school you will study otherwise you will stop so I, that was the, that was not an option for me so i had to work hard and i have to continue my studies and there were several several moments that come to my mind when you say about my childhood it was a very happy childhood because it's a kind of joint family and we were all happy with what we have but when i look back what i can give to my children and what i was going through at that point of time it was not an easy situation for any girl and education is something very very uh, coming to iisc i don't think i would have uh, uh, dreamt about it my dream was i have to travel across the world i have to get into an aeroplane all these things but coming to iisc happened over the time i evolved as a person